Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes in X-Plane 11. For this flight I am flying from Mumbai to Jaipur in India in a 707-320 Air India livery. As you can see, this is a Payware 707 by Michael Wilson. I got it in a package with an L-1011, the DC-8 I featured earlier on in the series, and a short Solent and it was a pretty good deal. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem currently available on the store when I checked for updates before starting this uh, video. So I wanted to make sure that I had the plane updated as much as possible, of course. Uh, so I didn't see it on the store anymore. So I don't know if it's for sale. And it's a shame if it isn't because it's a nice plane and se I have a, sh a soft spot for the 707 and L1011 in particular. So, yeah. It's pretty well detailed inside. Um, some functionality there. Engineer panel looks good. I don't know if every all the dials run, but at least it's uh, properly modeled and everything. And Lord knows I know how hard it is to do these cockpits. So, yeah, we're going to fly. But since this is sort of in the middle of the series, I should remind people of certain basic premises. First of all, I'm not using autopilot at any point. Um, second of all, we are listening to the Apollo 12 audio at the moment and we'll continue on to Apollo 13. Uh, we're currently at the point where the crew is on their way back from the moon and uh, we've been listening to all of the audio uh, throughout the series with um, just the empty spots, the pauses and places where they weren't talking cut out. So otherwise we've heard everything they had to say and it's been very entertaining. Uh, now, I did get a little of a copyright warning, not really a strike, but a warning in the, one of the previous videos because the crew played some music, and so I've uh, tried to limit the music <laughs> because on the way back from the moon, they have a lot of musical interludes. Anyway, uh, with all those notes, I don't know if there's anything else I needed to point out uh, beforehand, but uh, let's get going here. So exterior view, I mainly focus on the exterior view. Occasionally I'm in the interior, it depends. And we are starting out with the audio. And here we go. Uh, Dick, part of that test, we wanted to make sure whether or not you could uh, not see the star because of light casting. Uh, was that okay? This is a very loud plane. I'll try and use the volume mixer to limit that. That should be about right. Okay, uh, the uh, nav star then is uh, star 24 and the Earth far to right. I put the data in the oh, upper okay. left hand corner in, in response to a viewer request, so that's why those so numbers are up there. Otherwise, my goal was basically more of a cinematic thing. I've got photo scenery for most places that I'm flying over. That's ortho 4XP photo scenery. Mumbai unfortunately okay. looks very uh, foggy or smoggy down right now. Water, uh, down to zero before you go into the uh, I am using real world weather. So um, presumably it looks like this at the moment. Unfortunately. Okay, stand by. Sure, any time before you uh, set up the We gotta try and get above the clouds here. Uh, take it clear down to zero, then you'll have a undisturbed night's sleep. God, it's just solid cloud. Okay, you know we got that bladder all the way down to zero. Roger. That's unfortunate. Okay. It was tough landing in Mumbai in the previous, sorry, uh, previous, oh god, my camera controls. 
previous video in the Yak 40 because of the clouds, but this is ridiculous. There's some nice sights around Mumbai. In theory. <laughs> Gee gods. Oh, finally. Well, okay. Oh, no. No luck. Minor reset only. Maybe that started just turned on today. I think it's gonna keep teasing me. Maybe we can get a good look at uh, see the mountains in the distance. It's really very scenic. Okay, we can maybe see a little bit behind us and we could actually see the runway back there. Planes looking properly beautiful. Uh, Dick, please show you down to zero on wastewater now. Apollo 12, uh, we're ready for the EMOD down. Okay, here's coming. Roger. Also, Dick, how well could you see Venus, the first star you did, and uh, the fifth star, 163? Were those fairly visible? In this direction, the landscape is looking better, and the other direction, the plane is. Uh, navigating by the stars. I suppose in, I mean, I think in X-Plane 11 they've got the proper star field, but not the proper magnitudes. They're all just like one pixel spots. Or at least that's what I've noticed. Roger, we're through with the EMOD dump now, and when you look at 83, would you also look at now 54 to, uh, so we can check that one? Now if they had a in-game sextant, it might be possible to like navigate by the stars in the game. That would be interesting. Okay, now 54, 6.24 miles and zero velocity. Roger. Now I can look down there. That's fine. Follow trails uh, for your information at the end of the second quarter, Michigan is Ohio State 21 to 12. <laughs> Gotta update those scores. Okay. Finally, I'm there's still a little bit of a little Okay, 
<laughs> We're not sure you're cleared for that information. These guys. Uh, he doesn't know of any other place uh, where he could be found. Uh, so I have taken a look at uh, some previews of Microsoft Flight Sim, the new one that's coming out in 2020. Um, and it looks scrumptious, though I'm worried about my bandwidth. Of course I'm gonna get it. I played Flight Sim 4, 5, 98, 2004, and 10. So I think I've got more than... I've got half of them that I played and got to keep it above 50%, I suppose. Flap over speed. Look, you. Uh, my flaps were up. My flaps have been up for a long time. I hate when it does that. And I don't know why. I think it's a glitchiness with my. Because I've got the flap on a lever on a crawl quadrant axis, and I think it sort of occasionally goes off of uh, the right number. It's a little bit inconsistent. Anyway, so we might not be able to use flaps on landing. I've uh, trimmed out the Very imbalance, good. but... Yeah, maybe having flaps on the lever isn't a good idea. I've had this is a multiple chances to reconsider that, but I still like the general idea. Apollo 12 is 166,500 nautical miles from Earth, approaching at a velocity of 3,325 feet per second. Here's the power 12. Uh, Don, if you think uh, we're stable enough, if it looks like uh, we're under control down there, we're going to go ahead and start the Uh, we suggest you let your rate stamp out a little bit more. That might have been a little bit too much aileron trim. Oh, reset. Very dry area. From the look of it. Well, there, there seems to be some trees. It's one of those dry hills with trees kind of deals. Roger. Lots of little streams around the area. You can sort of see a river up ahead. Oh, this is one of those planes that has pressurization. Uh, sometimes the planes do not have pressurization, sometimes they do. It's caught me by surprise. I wish when 
you selected uh, the engines to start on, they just had the pressurization set. Got some weird patches over to the right there in the seat real. Ignore those for now. Solid 12 distance from Earth now, 165,521 nautical miles. Please excuse me, I'm going to take a look at pressurization. Cabin altitude up. Alt control P. Well, we'll try it. Apollo 12, Houston. I don't know if it'll work or not because I don't know what the setting is. Go ahead, Houston. Apollo 12. Uh, Roger, we suspect that after the evaporator temperature stabilizes here in the PC maneuver, the uh, temperature in the cabin may get a little warm for you. So we want to. Uh, what well, it's uh, not like working anytime soon. Look at the undulations in the landscape here. Okay, uh, last night it was fairly cold, PPC, isn't it? I mean, uh, that's... That's like some uh, abstract uh, painting kind of stuff position. or something. Uh, Roger, it'll probably take a lot of time. Take about another hour, probably. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I don't even know where to start with this landscape. Go. Uh, see, sometime this evening, if you've got uh, uh, time, we've got some geology questions down here that we would like to uh, send up to you. Of course they have geology questions. Are these different to the geology questions we got about three or four hours ago? <laughs> he's he's feeling like he's gotten quite a lot of geology questions already. It's really a continuation of the same kind of material. But we've got eight specific questions. Okay, why don't we start about About a ten, ten minutes. So we're picking up from the meal and we'll be ready to go in ten minutes. Finery, any time is fine. Thank you. It's still good to ask quickly because just so that the memories are fresh, of course. So it's understandable that they're not waiting until the crew gets back. Two quick ones on the surveyor work. The first one is. Are you bringing back any glass from the uh, surveyor thermal switch plate? No. The uh, glass, apparently, which we didn't know, was bonded onto uh, metal. And uh, then the metal, in turn, was bonded onto the little uh, standoff things that held it off the top of the box. And uh, we tried to get it. And. Uh, Everybody had told us back there that it was going to have separated from its bonding, and it had not. It was in great shape. It was bonded to the metal just perfect. And uh, we beat on it, smashed it, bent, and all we did was break it in little teeny tiny pieces, uh, shatter it, actually, is what happened, and it just remained fastened very tenaciously to the metal it was bonded to, and that was that. We just couldn't get it. Uh, Roger, whoever made that bonding material will appreciate that testimonial. <laughs> and the second one, Good bonding uh, material. Did you See some farms down there from the surveyor trenching area to our right. Other than the, uh, material There's that some that indication the, uh, of uh, settlements. Yeah. Not anything on the map. It's just a huge green area that looks like a forest. The scoop itself has some material left in it, I believe. Or it'll be in, in that, that bag and that'll be it. I mean, uh, India is a fairly now, small uh, area to pack a billion area. people, but still, the there are definite are places which seem uh, sparsely populated. There were two of them. One was bigger than the other. 
and uh, no, they didn't have any vent holes. Their orientation, both of them appeared to be in a east-west direction, uh, sort of uh, a, let's say you had a uh, strip that was about a foot wide, and you just uh, bent it and made a little triangular thing out of it. Uh, the bounds look, look something like that, and uh, we sampled all around one mound, brought back stuff from it, the material, excuse me, you'll clean. And uh, uh, that's about all I can say for them. They did have that all day. I guess you're hunting around for anything of volcanic in nature, and it didn't appear to be uh, to us anyhow. So I think this is actually called the Purna Wildlife Sanctuary. And it's, it's fairly big. It's not the only wildlife sanctuary around. So you can see more settlements here as we pass the wildlife sanctuary that's behind us. And now we have some settlements I don't have the names of. And we're crossing the border between the province of Maharashtra into Gujarat. We have been, we have been flying over the coastal area of Gujarat earlier in the previous flight. This is a further inland. Apollo break break for a moment. The lake in front of us is a reservoir in the Taipi River. A Tapi River. Tapi Apollo River. Houston, you can see the the dam to our left. Roger, we apparently lost your antenna for a while. We're ready to go again. Uh, Roger, yeah, we switched antennas there. Uh, Al, the last thing we heard you saying was that in some of the small craters there were glass covered rocks. So would you repeat anything? Roger, did you hear Pete's description? Negative. Somewhere downriver is the city of okay, Surat near the coast. The up to as little as 
is three or four feet in diameter, one foot deep. The ones that didn't look to me like they were made by either very heavy particles or very fast particles. You could usually look around at the bottom of them and see glass-covered small rocks. And a number of them. We took some pictures and documented them real well. And then uh, I'll let Pete, well, let me say the rest. Uh, we the sort of streaking and almost scarring of the landscape kind of pattern always interests me. Don't know how that happens. sort of tectonic ripples. I'm going to call them tectonic ripples. It's the best I can do. I have no idea what this pattern is all about. Lots of farmland here. The hills up ahead are the Shu Paneshwar Wildlife Sanctuary. Clouds sure ran out, didn't they? This is the Narmada River, again with a, a visible dam there making a reservoir. Sometime or another, either during the EVAs or after. 
Uh, Al's only comment, which you already said he talked about this morning, was the fact that the color did change with the sun angle between the first day and the second day. Uh, as far as the traverse goes, I guess that the most significant thing, uh, there was nothing unusual in Head Crater other than the, uh, the, uh, uh, fact that we found that, that I guess, the Head Crater was, uh, where we first saw the difference in soil below the ground and, and above the ground. The, uh, next most significant thing, I think, is as we did go over to Sharp Crater, uh, yeah, no, no, Head Crater is not where we were. Uh, the, uh, the crater, what was the name of the crater that we saw the uh, material we just discussed? But that was Bench Crater, right? On that, wasn't, wasn't the name of the crater our second stop on the we got sort of a canal or aqueduct going here okay. flying right over it the, uh, I, I get our books out except they're so dirty with, with dust and we've had a heck of a time getting rid of the dust in the command box, I don't want to do that no, uh, the the uh, uh, we, we discussed the uh, difference in texture of the rocks at the bottom of that crater. I guess the next most significant thing was that, that somewhere between Bench Crater and Sharp Crater, we obviously ran over what must be a, uh, a contact and that the ground very definitely changed to a softer, finer dust. We sank in deeper uh, out there, uh, not only right at Sharp Crater, but but leading up to it now. We both found it very difficult to ever walk slowly. We always went in a lope wherever we went. That just seemed the natural way to go. And so Al sort of spotted it first watching me run because he was behind and, and uh, he could tell that I guess I was kicking up more dust. Is that right now? And that's right. It was obvious that uh, Peter started running on different kind of ground. Like a dragon in C1, it turned out was different kind of ground. And uh, I guess that's the most significant thing over there uh, on that part of the traverse. From there, uh, we're not sure. Not sure what get, river get this is. Crater. They're, they're turned out now, but mm. I have to look at our photographs. Yep, the and map isn't particularly at, clear at about giving a name for it. And figure out exactly where Halo Crater was because there were about five little craters, all of them, which could have been Halo Crater all together, and it wasn't apparent in looking at the little map that we had, which was colored at that spot, whether there were five craters or two craters or what, and I had a very difficult time locating it. We suspect that we were not at Halo Crater, but if we weren't, we were awful darn close to it. Well, we've got uh, a border between two different seasons the in the photo scenery. Uh, Halo I'll keep it to the fall side. I think there's fall over here. Halo Crater, we For now. really got on a third type ground, which was the ground that we discussed around the surveyor crater, which seemed to be the firmest, especially down in the crater. Uh, it seemed to be the most firm ground that we were on. It still had dust. We still sank in, but we sank in the least uh, in the surveyor crater, uh, both going down to the surveyor from the one side and going up towards the lamp through uh, that blocky crater on the uh, other side nearest the lamp. The blocky crater was also an interesting feature, and that may be something that we, I think we did discuss, though, uh, as we stood there, was the fact that, that we felt that the surveyor crater was an old crater uh, that had been impacted uh, and was made. Hold Go on. ahead. Hold on for just a second. We're going to have to stick in the main for a second. Okay. Okay, I guess, I guess we discussed that, that we felt the surveyor crater must have been impacted 
uh, very early and had, had bedrock, and that this bedrock had weathered down to where the crater was very smooth, and there wasn't much there, and along came another one and, and made this uh, small blocky crater in the side of it, which, which must have been... Uh, okay, uh, let's go over to the more summary side. Uh, for contrast, the right where we were uh, at the Surveyor Crater, and of course we have samples of that. Uh, something that uh, Al and I just uh, were talking about. He wanted me to mention that the Surveyor, except for the fact that it had changed color, uh, looked uh, in very good shape. Uh, this is true, but there's something that I noticed using the cutters. Supposedly, the uh, tubes that we used in practice were exactly the same uh, uh, metal and, uh, and aluminum uh, that the surveyor was made out of. And if this is the case, something very definitely happened to the metal like it crystallized uh, because it was much easier to cut the surveyor tube except the one tube which I flat couldn't cut and I think that they were off on their dimension on that tube. It must have been a much stronger tube than they indicated. Uh, but thicker too, thicker wall too. Uh, but the wire bundles that we cut too also had the appearance of being very brittle. They cut very, very easily. I was, I was, yeah, the coating flaked off insulation. And uh, there was one wire bundle that had a cloth insulation on it, which, which was not on our bottom. And uh, there, there was a, uh, uh, the other wire bundle, which which was on the mock-up, wasn't quite the configuration that it was the mock-up. But uh, these wire bundles seem to uh, cut uh, quite easily also. Uh, and I don't think it's because I was juiced up. I think there was very definite uh, crystallization or something there. Well, you'll get to see that with the stuff we bring back. I guess the last most significant thing is, uh, is that Al and I and Dick also, uh, having watched our training, were impressed with the fact that we managed to get as far around uh, as we did, and, and that it was as easy going, uh, that kind of country as it turned out to be. The, di the distance that we covered, I guess we covered a little over a mile. You could get on Earth in your equipment, if you had lunar weight equipment on Earth, you could never make that traverse in that time. You'd die before you got to the end, and we weren't even sweat. We were just kind of hopping around out there doing the job. The only thing that kept us from moving faster was there was so much to see. Also, the only thing that kept us from studying more details at each site was the fact that we had to keep pressing on. So what's going to happen when we get back? We're not going to know all the details of each site because we just weren't able to stay there long enough as long as we'd like to on any site. We could have spent that whole time at any of those craters, trenched around them and looked at and collected different size rock type rocks around it and tried to go back and forth on the uh, uh, ejecta blanket, see if we could discover any difference in texture and all that sort of thing. But uh, the time just wasn't available. It was one of those things of how much you want to cover the time you got to do it. You know what Al was saying is we did Big Bend, Hawaii, uh, Meteor Crater, and uh, New Mexico, all in, in uh, one two-hour trip around there. That's about what it amounted to. Interesting choices yeah, for the crater names. Look, uh, look into the craters. Did you notice any um, boulder tracks that indicated there had been uh, many rocks rolled down besides the ones you rolled down or accumulations of boulders at the bottom of these uh, steep slopes? See some buildings there? No, not, not, not any particular distribution. When there were uh, rocks at the bottom, uh, it was uh, in these uh, blocky Well, that city at our tail is called uh, the Hood. D H like D A H O D. Right. Uh, now, the the dust. I don't know what the uh, the sorry, installation right below us is. Wasn't really standing in a position to observe uh, any track that the one rock made that I rolled down. The other rock that I threw down there was so small uh, that it didn't go very far anyhow. And now dust flew, and the rocks both bounded and rolled, uh, depending on how far along it was going down the uh, side of the crater. But it was not obvious to me that it was making any track. Now, as you stood back and looked at it from a different sun angle, I feel that maybe it would for a while, just like it was very obvious when we looked out our window where we had been walking around. Uh, oh, we could see for great distances where our foot 
footsteps went. Yeah, the seismologists are trying to get some feeling for whether or not you thought there was a lot of rock rolling that might be uh, causing the signals that they see. Now, if there was, it was not evident to us. Most of the rocks that we saw on the side of craters all had uh, dust around the bottom of them, uh, and they, it didn't look like they'd moved uh, for a long, long period of time, and uh, most of them looked like they were partially buried. The majority of them looked that way. That's right. Not only that, we didn't see any look like they thought they were going to roll down the near future either. <laughs> Roger. Hey, listen, when you pulled out the core tube, did the uh, holes collapse, or did they stay uh, there? That's that's a that's a good question. We didn't we didn't really really look down it, did we? Yeah. I did say that right. I was talking to Pete. Uh, the court, the uh, tubes themselves stayed pretty doggone uh, uncollapsed. We're about halfway through the flight. One or two inches. The minute you draw out the court tube, that top one inch, let's say, not two, one inch or so, would kind of crumble off, and some parts would fall down in. But the sides were still relatively vertical. It's the same thing that happened in the trenches. When Pete would pick the trenches, the sides would be almost 90 degrees. Except every time he had tapped the side, let's say accidentally with his shovel, then that part would get knocked off. But the part that would remain would, remain, would still remain 90 degrees. As long as he didn't touch it, it seemed to be happy right there at 90 degrees. Uh, and that reminds me of another thing. Huh? That pulsed my memory. Uh, uh, again, this is an impression. It seemed to me that there were some angles greater than 90 degrees in the trenches implying layering. And uh, although there wasn't any <laughs> difference in color, it, it seems to me that that would sort of imply that there was some layering there and that maybe this material has built up over a different time frame. Uh, if that's really true, you'll see that in the photographs. Very good. Hey, listen, when you deployed the solar wind experiment, did... Uh that staff go down into the ground far enough to uh, let the bottom of the foil contact the surface. And Interesting the color to the landscape. Up. Looks it's properly uh, soaked. Foil, uh, have difficulty in rolling up or Very soaked. Pops. Lots of little streams. Yeah, to answer the first question is, it did go all the way down until it touched the soil. It would have, I think, if we could have pushed on. I pushed on it as hard as I could, and then I kind of pushed out it hard enough to lift my feet off the ground, and that and it went down that far, which was uh, a foot or so, I, I can't recall, I, but I did take a picture of it, you'll be easily, yeah, I mean, you'll be able to easily determine how far The river in front of us is the Mahi River, and of course, uh, when it started there, to roll up, that lake is the Mahi Reservoir. A foot and a half, and then it didn't want to roll up anymore, it wanted to crinkle. Somewhere along the way, we temporarily crossed into Madhya Pradesh, and as we approach the reservoir, we'll be in Rajasthan. Communication issues. Apollo 12, we're switching antennas again. Apollo 12, Houston, Houston. Apollo 12, Houston. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, we lost on another uh, antenna switch over. Uh, Al, you were just saying that you held one end of the roller and we're rolling the foil back up. Lost it. Okay. 
crooked, and I rolled it up as best I could with my fingers on the edge, realizing that uh, I was going to get some lunar dirt in it, but there wasn't any other way to solve the problem. And I tried to be uh, clean with it, but I'm sure there's going to be some dirt on it, and I hope we can, you know, the experimenters can brush the dirt off or bake it off or do whatever they, so they bake out the, uh, the molecules, so maybe they can just dust it off, and, you know, dust the thing off, and hopefully they won't be any worse. Now, when they find it, when I finally took it back to the rock box to put it in his Teflon bag, he, we looked at the bag and we looked at the roller, and by my technique of rolling it, the, the roller was bigger than the bag. So I took my hands and just crushed the foil on the outside, you know, just squeezed it together, and made it big and, uh, small enough to fit the bag we put in. So that outside layer has got a lot of dirt for my hands on it, but inside it, it ought to be relatively skinny, particularly on the side nearest the hinge point, because I tried to never touch there. Roger, that sounds good, Al. I'm sure the data's still good on it, and they just wanted to plan their procedures in the LRL. But that's all the questions we have for you, unless there are some other things that come to mind. Okay, let me throw one at you so I don't forget it. Okay. You know, we had some trouble with those Teflon bags. We had some trouble with those Teflon bags overnight. On some the mild the rises, bags. but overall we are clearly getting into flatter territory here. Up. I don't have photo scenery over to the right, so I'll keep uh, this view. got some more straightforward swaths of endless farmland, <laughs> as happens everywhere, of course. There's a city to our left there. Uh, Pratapgar is the best I can do for that one. Uh, further to our left is Udaipur. Oh, I didn't actually mean to turn left. Uh, I can't really see it. Udaipur is pretty big. Uh, seismic experiment as it did. 
Uh, yeah, we had to turn that off from the ground, and there was a slight uh, overburn in getting the uh, signals up there to turn off the computer. And the uh, slight overburn uh, dropped it in uh, a little further east, and uh, we had programmed. Okay, we were trying to strike that out up here. Okay, thank you. Uh, listen, we've got a couple of final scores for you. Michigan 24 and Ohio State 12. Uh, Missouri 69, Kansas 21. Sounds good. How about giving our families a call in the next 10 minutes and see what's going on? Roger, I tried a few minutes ago and your wife... I guess it's fine. Couldn't take your wives home a few minutes ago. I'll give them a try again. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Don. There's a luncheon going on over in your neighborhood someplace. <laughs> They're at a luncheon. Oh, that's right. At 197 hours, 23 minutes, follow 12 distance from Earth is 163,401 nautical miles, velocity 3,396 feet per second. Apollo 12, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Uh, Roger, I just talked to uh, your lady. Uh, Steve, Jane said that uh, Christopher got a bike for his birthday, and within an hour after he got it, it uh, had a small accident. He didn't have any problems, but the bike is a little uh, worse for wear. He's uh, a little disturbed over that. Also, uh, Peter went with the Allens up to Alton's Lake deer hunting, uh, looking back uh, tomorrow afternoon. So, uh, of course, now we have no report on his prowess as a hunter. And uh, she was particularly delighted with the way the flight's going. She said, so really congratulate you on a good flight. They're looking for you back home. Well, I haven't That's regained nice consciousness job. in here. Uh, Dick, talk to uh, Mark. Dick's not up right now. I talked to Al. Okay, Al. We'll just have to uh, wait until we get some lower altitude for the cockpit view. Uh, Al, Al's not on it either. Wait, wait a second. I've got to get him up on the comm. We're just learning water. Roger. I'll give you a call in a minute. Fine. Go ahead, Don. Uh, Roger. Uh, Dick, I talked to uh, Barbara. No, no, this Al. Oh, okay. Uh, let's hold off on this. We're about to switch antennas. I'll be back with you in a minute. Okay, Al, Sue reports that they had a real nice luncheon. Uh, he went to that this afternoon. Uh, the kids, of course, are home from school. And today's a real nice day here in Houston, so they've been having um, fun around the house. And the only other thing is that they're really getting anxious for Monday and get you back, guys back down here on the earth. Thank you, Don. We feel the same way, believe me. Roger. Is Dick around there yet? It Dick's up. Okay, uh, Barbara... He's up. Go ahead. Roger. Uh, Barbara reports that uh, Uncle Herb has repaired all the bicycles, and <laughs> the kids are really delighted with that. Uh, she also reported that the luncheon went off very nicely. Uh, also, Mom and Dad have gone up uh, to Aunt Mary to restock the larders around the house to get all the food they need in the house. Uh, Barbara reports the children have been particularly good today, and she's very uh, happy over that, obviously. And that they're happy about the flight, and really looking forward to the flight down. Wow, so like a normal day around the Gordon household. Thank you, Doc. Roger. Listen, we got some final uh, ball scores for you. Cornell 28 over Penn 14. Uh, Penn State over Pittsburgh 27 to 7. Uh, Pete, Princeton, Gotta figure Park, out what this area is. Purdue, There's a Gandhi Sagar. 
wildlife uh, sanctuary off to the right there. But that's not really what we're flying over. Very good. Let me give you uh, the uh, briefly checklist. The crew status report is uh, as follows. Uh, CDR had one decongestant. Uh, CMP had one. Seems like that's an uh, interesting enough landscape to have a name of some kind. I've got Google Maps open and still not entirely sure about the name of that lake to the right, though I expect it's yet another reservoir. But this probably means that we may fly the uh, second uh, P-23 back about an hour, but we'll brief you on that change and what the test is just off first thing in the morning. Okay, and I guess the other question is, uh, do they still plan to do uh, the TV uh, the way we talked about it before the flight? There's a seam there. Stand by a second. And I don't know if that's the stock scenery. It sure looks like there's a block of stock scenery here. That's not photo scenery. I mean, obviously, it's not entirely wrong. Pete, the plans are to go ahead as briefed before the flight. And for the most part, the photo scenery has been pretty darn good so far. I'll have to get this block. I don't know what that's a reference to, but okay. I mean, uh, to do it all that jazz. That's right. Apollo 12, uh, Houston. The surgeon was wondering if anybody was going to be hooked up on uh, bio harness tonight. Uh, we prefer not to. I don't have any on, and the other two guys, uh, uh, it just, there's a pain in the neck getting in the bag with all that, uh, big cable hooked up. Hey, well, you don't need it for anything, do you? Hey, I'll tell you, I'm going to ask this question. How about that, this, uh, all of us just completely unplugged and not even get on the, uh, on the radio. If you want us for anything, use the crew alert.
two, two, three hours apart uh, since we came back from the lunar surface and we're still getting junk off them. Uh, Roger, all the medical time. Much, much more so than going out. The surgeons down here are re reviewing their treatment for silicosis, so we'll be prepared for you. What the hell name is that? Miner's disease from breathing coal dust. There you go, okay, I'm with you. Hey, we're going to send up a uh, crew alarm here for you in just a second, just a crew alert, excuse me, uh, check out the system. Okay, when we, we, we get the power on the, uh, we're just rigging the, uh, ready ready go. Go. Ready to go. tell us when you're ready. Uh, is that my alarm or from the recording? Works just fine, Gary. Uh, okay, that yeah, was the master alarm here. in the recording. Finally, right, we'll, good. Uh, we'll good times. Okay, so we'll wait. Nighty night. Nighty night. Hey, uh, Todd, tell Paul Weiss to have a lively night tonight, will you? Will do. Hmm. I sure hope I got full of scenery at Jaipur. It wouldn't be the first time I landed in a place that I didn't have photo scenery, but 197 hours 46 somewhat minutes. negligent of me. We said good night to the crew. Uh, I think I see the border up ahead. Maybe. Hours 45 minutes elapsed time. Apollo 12 is 162,665 nautical miles from Earth. Approaching at a velocity of 3,413 feet per second. As you heard, we will not uh, monitor crew heart rates or respiration this evening. And the crew has also uh, disconnected their communication system. And if we need to arouse them, we'll use the crew alert system, which you heard tested. At 197 hours 47 minutes, this is Mission Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control at 198 hours 18 minutes. We've had no further conversation with the crew since saying good night to them at 197 hours, 45 minutes. At present, uh, Apollo 12 is 161,607 nautical miles from Earth. Spacecraft velocity, 3,438 feet per second. The entry clock has been started here in the Mission Control Center. It shows we're 46 hours, two minutes away from entry interface. Still nearly two days before from they the get back. The spacecraft reaches 400,000 feet. At 198 hours, 18 minutes, this is Mission Control, Houston. Oh, seems like a pretty big gap between the look of the landscape in the stock scenery and uh, photo scenery over there, but maybe that's just seasonal. Usually it's actually a fairly good match. This is a yeah, it's Control probably just a season. Hours, 18 minutes. That's certainly uh, We've had farmland and such, and cities of course. We're pretty close to Jaipur now. I'm considering descent. Minutes. Monitoring uh, spacecraft systems by yeah. telemetry. We'll begin the All systems functioning normally. Apollo 12 continues to the closer to the Earth. Distance now 159,689 nautical miles. 
velocity 3,485 feet per second. This is Mission Control Houston at 199 hours, 18 minutes. This is Apollo Control at 200 hours, 22 minutes. All still quiet aboard Apollo 12. The crew is some three hours into its rest period. Apollo 12 is 157,422 nautical miles from Earth. Velocity 3,539 feet per second. At 200 hours, 22 minutes, this is Mission Control, Houston. Control at 201 hours, 18 minutes. All still going well with Apollo 12, as it is now 155,515 nautical miles from Earth, approaching at a velocity of 3,585 feet per second. And at 201 hours, 18 minutes, this is Mission Control, Houston. Apollo Control, 203 hours, 15 minutes, ground elapsed time, 41 hours, 5 minutes until entry. Crew of Apollo 12s, still asleep at this time. Scheduled sleep period uh, still runs to a ground elapsed time of 208 hours, about another 5 hours from now. Current velocity, 3,689 feet per second relative to the earth once again we can't quite get a name on this river 151,377 that city miles. to our right is called Tonk though spacecraft weight T -O -N -K. pounds things rather quiet here in the mission control operations room The green team headed by uh, Flight Director Cliff Charlesworth settled in for the night. And at 203 hours, 16 minutes ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control, 204 hours, 36 minutes ground elapsed time with a position and velocity report on Apollo 12. 39 hours, 44 minutes away from entry into Earth's atmosphere. Distance from Earth, 148,469 nautical. Velocity, reference to the Earth, 3,764 feet per second. And at 204 hours, 37 minutes, ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control, 206 hours, 22 minutes, ground elapsed time, 37 hours, 59 minutes to entry interface. Position and velocity report on Apollo 12. Distance from Earth, 144,597 nautical miles. Velocity now, 3,866 feet per second. Crew still asleep at this time. And at 206 hours, 22 minutes, ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. Uh, we're still pretty far out, even though I've descended. I've probably descended a little bit early. The highway to our this right will lead into Jaipur. The city to our right uh, is called call Niwai. N-I-W-A-I. N-I-W-A-I. Oh, there's some music. Good morning. 
Okay. Okay. Limited amount of music, hopefully not a problem. Paul White keeps getting to sleep, period. He managed to get to talk to them this time. Houston 12. Go ahead, Phil. We'll go ahead and eat now and uh, pick up the O2 fuel cell purge and wastewater and all that stuff one time. Okay, that's the first uh, update to your flight plan is to scratch the uh, O2 fuel cell purge and the wastewater dump. I was just zoomed out too much. That's our Jaipur airport. We're about 22, 20 nautical miles away. Okay, can we breathe now? Not yet, apparently. Hmm. This may be a problem. Want to land? Okay, Pete, you're you're breaking up a little bit. I'll From exterior to view, and that's too arcade. We'll it here, and then I'll get it off that. Okay. Twelve, Houston. Hey, well, uh, read your message again. Well, eventually, I'll have to bring the altitude down. So. I can't quite hear his message to the recovery forces. Twelve, Houston, you're fading in and out. Say again, all after Tim. As we have energy for Well, that's Jaipur right there. We can see the city. Copy. Side Pete, check it out. Copy, Pete. Very good, thank you. How's, how's Chow in the wardroom this morning? Very good, we're still eating. Who's mess cooking this morning? Oh, we're all taking a little turn at it. This is one of the few of those that you can see all four of us. It takes a while before the earth uh, actually that, uh, appears to be yeah, large in the window. A 
Apollo 12, Houston, your message is on the way, and I got some ball scores if uh, Dick's listening. Running down the Washington, Washington State results, Dick. I don't know how long. In the top ten. Maybe, uh, maybe we're dead in Indiana, here. I don't know. 44 to 21. As you got the score last night, I see in the log, Michigan beat Ohio State 24 to 12. And last night, USC beat UCLA. Try and fly around a bit to uh, get so some we'll air. Michigan and we'll USC see. In the Rose Bowl. Penn State beat Syracuse. Or Penn State beat Pittsburgh. Well, the airport is clearly visible right there. Stanford beat Cal, 29 to 28. Stanford beat Cal. Tennessee over Kentucky, 31 to 26. Missouri laid it on Kansas, 69 to 21. TCU beat Rice, 21 to 17. And Houston beat uh, Wyoming 44 to 21. It sounds like they had some wild ball games down there yesterday. Well, yeah, I don't know any it. particular sites in Jaipur. Hey, for information, how, uh, how's the gas in your water? Is it all right? There's a definite uh, circle the right there. Thank you, Dick. That's the data point we were looking for. And how's your cabin temp uh, working using the manual mixing? Don't know where exactly so the city center is. Last night, uh, last night, uh, glycol and that temp is holding at about 55, 56. And we were fairly comfortable last night. Oh, it's very good. The place looks fairly evenly distributed. So this looks and, a little uh, bit more uh, built yeah, up. Oh no, there's the, uh, a definite park and official looking things around here. Raj, understand, Pete. It, is the water all staying in place or is it That seems very convincing. All? Okay. Oh, goodness. Good, good, good. I guess all we we can is, see uh, now. Is a reflector and a heat sink and uh, we didn't have any going out, of course. And uh, now that we're so light and empty, uh, well, I think we've got chilled out pretty good. Roger, Pete. This is Apollo Control, Apollo 12 now exactly 140,000 nautical miles out from Earth. Velocity steadily building up, 3,991 feet per second. God tends to the right, that's probably that related to the flap Nash issue from earlier. Earlier after they began talking to Mission Control, it was to Rear Admiral Davis aboard the USS Hornet, which is the prime recovery vessel for Apollo 12, South Pacific. Is it going to get worse if I lower Dear one Red notch Dog. of flaps? Apollo 12 with three tail Yes, it is. Aboard. Not do that. Expect to make PIM or PIM, point of intended movement. So we're going to have to land without the flaps. For only one pass. Signed Pick, uh, Pete, Dick, and Al. Continuing to monitor as the uh, crew finishes their breakfast. Pick up any further conversation. Houston 12. Good 
Okay, landing gear down. Hello, 12 Houston. At a little less than 140,000 miles out on the glide slope, you're looking pretty good. Uh, you're on speed. Mid course six, right now we're looking on the order of two tenths of a foot a second. If six is not performed, seven looks like about seven tenths of a foot yep, per second. A little bit off there. No new record for the sleep. One, one, zero, two, one, one, zero, two, eight, zero, four, zero, three, zero. Uh, it's a Rod's bit wobbly big, as uh, usual with when there's a flat uh, problem. Patch on your skin where that sensor was bothering you doing. Uh, oh. I have uh, a rash where every sensor was, and they're all doing okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, doesn't seem like we've got a terminal building here. Reading Alpha through Delta. 30.8 to 8.9er. And he's just reading numbers now. So we've arrived in Jaipur. Next flight will be to Amritsar. And after that we'll be going over to Himalayas, so that'll be fun. Next flight will be the, in the L-1011. It'll be a relatively quick okay, flight, I think. But okay, again, uh, uh, good-looking airliner, at least by my tastes. Okay, I'm gonna pause the Apollo 12 audio there. And I don't know where the heck this taxiway leads, but I'll figure it out. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this flight. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.